Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to repeat a shape along a path or around a circle in Photoshop. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. Now, I created an illustration similar to this in Illustrator in another tutorial. And I got a question from somebody who'd watched it and said, how could I do that in Photoshop? Well, the answer is it's not nearly as easy to do in Photoshop as it is in Illustrator. But if all you've got to work with is Photoshop, then I'm going to show you how you can create this illustration inside Photoshop. And what we're particularly interested in is these stars here that are all spaced around this inner circle. But because this illustration requires a lot of shapes and paths, I thought it's worthwhile to have a look at all the elements that go towards making it. So let's get started. If this video is useful to you, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it. Shares are really valuable to me as I build my channel. If you click the subscribe button, then you'll be alerted when new videos are released. To get started, I'll create a brand new document that we can work in. So I'll choose File and then New. I'm going to make this document 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels in size, but yours can be pretty much any size that you like. So I'm going to start by adding a background to this image. So I have the background layer selected here because I selected transparent when I created the document. I'm just going to select a foreground and a background color that are sort of in the color scheme I want to work with. I'm going to click on the gradient tool here. This gives me a foreground to background gradient if I select this option here and I want it to be radial. So I'm just going to click and drag out a radial gradient here that's light here and dark here. It's a really simple way to create an interesting background. It's a lot nicer than just using a flat color background. So I'm going to click the new layer icon here and we're going to start working on this new layer. Because I'm going to be creating a lot of concentric circles, it will behove me to add some lines in here that I can use. So I can choose View and then New Guide and create a horizontal guide at 50%. So that just means it's going to be halfway across the image. I don't have to measure it, it's just going to be automatic. And then View, New Guide, and this time let's make it vertical and again 50%. So this marks the center of the document, just makes life a little bit easier for me. And I need to make sure that I'm snapping two guides. So I have snap turned on and snap two guides is turned on as well. So I'm going to be able to snap to the center point when I click on it. So now I need to start with some circles. So I'm going to click here on the ellipse tool. This is the shape tool and I need to select what I need to make it. So in this case, it's going to be a shape and I want the fill color to be a blue. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to sort of select, I think this blue here is the fill color. So let's go and grab it here. And then for my stroke, I want to select this blue here, which I think is this one here. So there's a nice stroke. And let's just make the width of this stroke a little bit wider, probably something like about eight pixels, but we can change that in a minute. So I'm going to click and drag from the center where these two lines are intersecting. When I do that, you can see that I'm not getting a circle. Well, I'll get a circle if I add the shift key to it. And I'm going to get a circle centered over the intersection of those two grid lines if I hold the Alt or Option key. So now I've got Shift and Alt or Shift and Option on the Mac selected. And I'm going to let go the left mouse button and then let go the two keys. And now I can go ahead and make some changes. For example, if I don't think that my stroke is wide enough, then I can go ahead and increase the stroke. So I'm just going to take that out a little bit heavier. So there's my first ellipse. So now let's go and create a second one. And this one's going to be inside the first one. And all we do is go and do exactly the same thing. Click the ellipse tool, start in the very middle, start dragging, and then add the Shift and Alt keys. And this is going to be the middle of my shape. So I'm just going to let go of the left mouse button and then left go the two keys that I was holding down. Now this time I want to change the color, so I'm going to use a sort of pale yellow in the middle. 
and I want to keep with my darker blue as my stroke color. So let's just make sure that we've got that selected as the stroke color. And again, I think I'm just going to increase the width of my stroke up to maybe around 12 points, something like that. So that's what we've got so far. Now in the original illustration, which was the one that we were looking at, you can see that we've got a star in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead now and create my star. The star is going to be created using the polygon tool. You can create a star from the polygon tool. So I'm just going to click up here, add a new layer for this. And then let's go and have a look at the polygon tool options because here is the ability to turn a polygon into a star and that's exactly what we want. We want a five pointed star. So that's the shape that we want. In this case, we also want it to be filled with a color and outline. So we can just go with the settings that we have here. Just want to check and see what the OK, so the original star had yellow in the middle and red on the outside. So let's go and select the colors for that. So I'm going to select a sort of yellowish color, maybe a little bit darker for this, and red for the outside. And I want a really nice sort of crimson red. So now that I've got those selected, I've got my five pointed star option selected. So again, I'm going to click in the middle here and I'm going to start dragging out and I want my star to be lined up sort of like this. So that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to let go my left mouse button and here is my star. Now again, I want this to have a slightly heavier stroke. So I'm just going to increase the stroke on this shape again. We'll be back down to probably about 12 to keep it consistent across all these elements. So now I'm going to click the final layer and here we want to arrange a circle of stars around our object. And this is what we came here to learn to do. And this is what is a little bit more difficult in Photoshop than it is in Illustrator. So we're going to start by creating the shape for this. And for that, we're going to go back into our ellipse tool. But this time, instead of having a shape layer, we want a path. Now that's critical because in a minute, we're going to add the stars to the path. So it's important that we have a path. Again, we're going to click on the middle of this shape. And we're going to add the Shift and the Alt keys, or Shift and Option on the Mac. We're just going to drag out to create our concentric circle. It's going to be pretty much in the middle of this outside area because that's where we want our stars to be. Now the problem with Photoshop is that it doesn't have the ability for you to create shapes and then space them evenly along this path. But we can sort of fudge it in a way. And we can fudge it by using a brush. But of course that requires us to have a brush. So let's go and create a brush to use. I'm going to choose File New and I'm going to set this to 200 by 200 to make my brush. So 200 by 200 pixels transparent and just click OK. So here's my new document and let's just size that up so we can see what we're working on. So now I want to go and create my star shape, but this time instead of a path and instead of shape, I want this to actually just be pixels. So I want a filled star. So let's go and get our polygon tool again and let's make sure that we're creating a star, which we are. And so I'm going to click in the middle of this area, just loosely pick a middle sort of position. I'm going to drag out until I get my star shape and this is going to be a brush. So I want to just about fill this square here. If it's not quite in position, I can hold the space bar as I drag to reposition it. And I'm just going to try and make it as big as I can. So that's pretty good there. So I'm going to let go the left mouse button and this automatically gets filled with the color because I chose pixels. So now I'm going to control click on the layer thumbnail here, which just selects this shape. And this is going to be my brush. So I'll choose Edit and then Define Brush Preset. And I'm going to call this Star 2. 
because I know I've got star one, but I want you to realize that star two is the one that we've just created so that you know that this is going to work for you. So I've clicked OK. So we can now turf this document. We don't need it any longer. So I'm just going to click its close button and I don't want to save it. So I'm just going to click no because the brush has already been saved. So we're back in this illustration here and what we want to do is to spread stars all the way around this path. So let's go and get the brush tool and let's go and make sure that we have our star selected. Well we do, it's the last brush in the brush palette will be the one that we just created. So we've got our brush selected. So now let's go to window and let's go and get brush because I want to see these brush dynamics. I want to make sure that I have control over the brush. So I'm going to start increasing the spacing because this is going to give us the spacing of these stars around this shape. And so I'm going to start with something like 162 or whatever pulls these two stars apart from each other. I want to make sure that everything else is turned off here, in particular shape dynamics, because if it was turned on, then strange things are going to happen. So we've got our brush. I'm going to be painting with red because that's the foreground color. I have my path selected here. So let's go to the Paths palette. If your Paths palette is not visible, you go Window, Paths, so you can see it. And you should have a work path, which is this circle. And now if you click down here, you'll be stroking the path with the brush. And I'm just going to click to do that. Now, I've just made a really lucky guess here. So I'm going to assume that that was not correct and I'm going to show you what not correct looks like. So I'm just going to press Control alt z to undo that. And I was on 162, so let's take it back to 160%. And now let's go and do the same thing. And this is what I expected to happen. I expected to have some stars that were slightly overlapping and that's what is going to happen probably to you. And if it does happen, what you're going to do is you're going to do Edit, Undo. And then you're going to, and then you're going to reset the spacing. So you're going to find a different value for spacing. Now I know the 162 works. Let's see what 160 does. So we'll just click on Stroke Path with Brush. And again, we've got that overlap. So what you would do is you would try different amounts of brush spacing, but you'll have to remove the brushes each time. Try a new spacing, click on this and see if you end up with everything nicely spaced around. Now this has got a slight overlap, so it's not the value we need. So let's go and do undo. And let's go to our 162 because we actually know that this is going to work. And again, click this option here. And when you get the setting that actually works for you, then you've got your illustration created. So it is a trial and error process here to get these stars to be evenly spaced around this circle. But you should be able to do it by just trialing some values. If these stars are too far apart, then you'll just alter the spacing back down again. Let's try 110 and see what it looks like. We need it to look a little bit spaced out here, so it's probably too small. Let's try 137 here. Let's remove these stars. So I'm going to press Control alt z to remove the stars. And now I'm going to try again with 137. Well, they're a little bit closer, but they're overlapping. So Control alt z Let's try 138 because it's going to be a trial and error process to see exactly how much spacing we need to get these to be spaced evenly around this shape. So Control alt z got 139 this time. Well, it's not quite right. Control alt z let's try 140. And again, click. Well, 140 does it. So just trial and error on the spacing until you get something that works for you. Now, there may be the situation where you want your stars to rotate as they go around. You can see that this star is upright all the way around. Well, it's very easy to rotate it 
Just going to undo that with Control Alt C and let's go back into Shape Dynamics because for Shape Dynamics what I want to do is I want to set the angle jitter to direction and so the stars are going to now rotate around the circle as we put them in place. So again I'm going to click here on Stroke Path with Brush and this time you can see that the stars are rotating as they're turning around. With this sort of base element in the star is always pointing inwards with this single point pointing outwards. So if we're happy with what we've achieved here now we can just get rid of the work path because we don't need that any longer. So I'm just going to drag and drop the work path onto the trash can and then let's clear these guides with View Clear Guides. And there's our element that we've created inside Photoshop. We are using some trial and error to achieve this result but it is possible to achieve inside Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.